Good morning, and welcome to day 26 of Bible in a Year, uh, as we explore through Genesis to Revelation in 365 days. We are reading the greatest story ever told, and that is the love story between God and his people. Uh, today is the last day of the period of the patriarchs, and it will be the last two chapters of Genesis, the last two chapters of Job, and Psalm 17 we'll be reading today. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz, and today we're going to be reading Genesis 49-50, where Jacob blesses his sons before his death. And then Jacob, who is Israel, uh, dies, and his sons mourn his loss and bury him as instructed with his family in the land of Canaan. Then we go on to Job 41 to 42, and we hear God's reply to Job. And finishing the chapter, Job responds to God. And then our psalm is Psalm 17, where we hear another prayer of David, a plea of rescue against David's enemies. So let's start. Chapter Genesis chapter 49. Then Jacob called for his sons and said, Gather around so I can tell you what will happen to you in days to come. Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father Israel. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my mighty, and first sign of my strength. Excelling in honor, excelling in power. Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel, for you went up onto your father's bed, onto my couch, and defiled it. Simeon and Levi, you are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter their council. Let me not join their assembly, for they have killed men in their anger and hamstringed oxen as they pleased. Cursed be their anger, so fierce, and their fury so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub of Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom belongs, and the obedience of the nations is his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darkened than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun will live by the seashore and become a haven for ships. His border will extend towards Sidon. Issachar is a raw-boned donkey, lying down between two saddlebags. When he sees how good is his rest place and how pleasant is his land, he will bend his shoulder to the burden and submit to forced labor. Dan will provide justice for his people. As one of the tribes of Israel, Dan will be a serpent by the roadside, a viper along the path that bites the horse's heels so that its riders tumble backwards. I look for your deliverance, O Lord. Gad will be attacked by a band of raiders, but he will attack them at their heels. Asher's food will be rich. He will provide delicacies fit for a king. Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near spring, whose branches climb over a wall. With bitterness, archers attack him. They shot at him with hostility, but his bow remained steady, his strong arm stayed limber. Because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, because of your father's God who helps you, because of the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of the heavens above, blessings of the deep that lies below, blessings of the breast and women. Your father's blessings are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, than the bounty of the age-old hills. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he devours the prey, in the evening he divides the plunder. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them, giving each the blessing appropriate to him. Then he gave them these instructions. I am about to be gathered to my people, 
Bury me with the fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the caves in the field of Machpelah near Mamre in Canaan, which Abraham bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite, along with the field. There Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished giving instruction to his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Chapter 50 Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full forty days, for that was the time required for embalming, and the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. When the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to the Pharaoh's court, If I have found favor in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him my father made me swear an oath and said, I am about to die. Bury me in the tombs I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he has made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court, and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. When they reached the threshing floor of Atad, near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly. And there Joseph observed a seven-day period of mourning for his father. When the Canaanites who lived there saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, The Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony of mourning. This is why this place near the Jordan is called Abel Mizraim. So J J Jacob's son did, this, <coughs> did as he commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre, which Abraham had bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite, along with the field. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. So when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When these messages came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I'll provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Jo Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third Jeff generations of Ephraim's children. Also the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knee. And Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at a hundred and ten, and after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. The end of Genesis. Next reading is Job 41 to 42. Chapter 41. Can you pull in the Leviathan with a fish hook? Or tie down his tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord around his neck or his nose? Or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he keep begging you for mercy? Will he speak to you with gentle words? Will he make an agreement with you for you to take him as your slave for life? Can you make a pet of him like a bird, or put him on a leash for your girls? Will traders barter for him? Will they divide him up among the merchants? Can you fill his hide with harpoons, or his head with fishing spears? If you lay a hand on him, you will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of subduing him is false. The mere sight of him is overpowering. No one is fierce enough to rouse him. Who then is able to stand against him? Who has claim against him that I might pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. 
I will not fail to speak of his limbs, his strength and his graceful form. Who can strip off his outer coat? Who can approach him with the bridle? Who dares open the, mo the doors of his mouth, ringed about with his fearsome teeth? His back is rows of shields, tightly sealed together, each so close to the next, that no air can pass between. They are joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. This snorting throws out flashes of light. His eyes are like the rays of dawn. Firebrands stream from his mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from his nostrils. As from a boiling pot over a fire of reeds. His breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from his mouth. Strength resides in his neck. Dismay goes from him. Before him, the folds of his flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. His chest is hard as rock, hard as a lower millstone. When he rises up, the mighty are terrified. They retreat before his thrashing. The sword that reaches him has no effect. Nor does a spear of the dart or the javelin. Iron he treats like straw, and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make him flee. Sling stones are like a chaff to him. A club seems to him but a piece of straw. He laughs at the rattling of the lance. His undersides are jagged potsherds leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. He makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. Behind him he leaves a glistening wake. One would think the deep had white hair. Nothing on earth is his equal, a creature without fear. He looks down on all that are haughty. He is king over all that are proud. Chapter 42 and Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You asked, Who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, Listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears have heard you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said, Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends, because you have not spoken to me what is right, as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourself. My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken to me what is right, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and J Zophar, the Namathite, did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made his, him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over the trouble the Lord had brought upon him, and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camel, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, the second Kezia, the third Karen Hapuch. Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation, and so he died old and full of years. Here ends the book of Job. And our last is Psalm 17. Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. May my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart and examine me at night, though you tested me, you will find nothing. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. As for the deeds of men, by the words of your lip, I have kept myself from the ways of violence. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not slipped. I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. Show the wonders of your great love. You who saved by your right hand, those who took refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who assail me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. 
They close up their callous hearts, and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a great lion crouching in cover. Rise up, O Lord, confront them, bring them down, rescue me from the wicked by your sword. O Lord, by your hand, save me from such men, from men of this world who reward is in this life. You, you still the hunger of those who cherish, their sons have plenty, and they store up wealth for their children. And I, in righteousness, I will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Here ends the reading. We thank God for that as uh, King David says that he shows the wonder of his great love who saves us by his right hand, that we might take refuge, that we might keep him as the apple of our eye, that he might hide us in the shadow of your wing. These are such comforting uh, passages. I just love them. And Job, we see, wow, what a, God talks about such animals as Leviathan here and Again, nothing I know anything about. Whew. But Job admits that too. He says, Surely I spoke of things I didn't understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. And Job's right. <laughs> Way over his head. And he knows where uh, he knows where his bread is buttered. And because of this, um, God uh, says that the three friends must humble themselves and give a sacrifice on behalf of their sins for saying what was wrong. Uh, to Job, and Job uh, is rewarded by a double portion. Uh, this is a beautiful, that when you are obedient to God, uh, that he provides you with uh, much, uh, not just physical riches, but spiritual riches more, more so. Uh, and lastly, Genesis 49 to 50, we hear about Jacob blessing his sons, and there's some really nice things he says about his sons and some not so good. Like, for example, Reuben um, sleeping in his bed and defiling uh, his concubine. Um, understandable, right? I mean, some of these things are pretty harsh judgments, but I mean, they're, they're doled out according to each. Um, that's why we have to be accountable for the actions that we have. And then lastly, in verse 50, we talk about um, them burying their father, uh, and it says that he wants them to take him back. And they have this huge procession of people that go back, even pharaohs, uh, all of pharaoh's dignitaries. I mean, this is a serious funeral. And then at the end, it says that uh, when Joseph dies, he is buried in in uh, Egypt. So kind of a testament to Egypt, uh, I guess. Uh, this just shows how... Egypt is being blessed with, with Joseph uh, and how he was blessed by, by their land. Um, I just uh, I think this is such a beautiful story of his, uh, his obedience and dedication to God. Uh, I hope that you feel uh, warm and, uh, and nurtured by this by these passages, um, like David's prayer that you might uh, plea for God and that he might hear your prayer and that you might be satisfied. As it says, I will see your face when I awake. I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. May you be satisfied with God. Have a blessed day. Um, we'll talk to you tomorrow.